Uh, I want to thank you all for coming. certainly want to thank everybody um, that's involved in education, that's involved in law enforcement, that's involved in service in our community. Appreciate you all coming out. Um, obviously, as a parent of three kids that attend this school, I think I can share just the concern that a lot of parents, teachers, educators uh, felt across our nation with the situation just happened in Florida. And you know, one thing I want to do is thank the thousands of people, literally, that have contacted us throughout the state because we want to help solve a problem, and we're committed to doing that. And let me tell you how this started out. This started with teachers reaching out to me, saying, Will, we need help. And so we started asking, you know, what can we do to solve this problem? And there's two things I want to address first that actually aren't in our bill that are things I think we certainly need to look at as our state and that I support. The first is having an SRO, SRO officer in every school in the state. I think we've got to look at that. I also think we've got to look at funding that from a state standpoint. The second thing is having additional allocation, a line item in the ETF that's actually going to fund school safety, things such as cameras, making sure the doors are secure. We've got to make sure that our schools are secure and that they're safe. But as we saw in Florida, you know, they had an SRO officer. They had different school security going on. However, the gunman was still able to get in there. And that's what we're here today to talk about. One of the things is the bill that you know I'm introducing. And it's and the bill deals with this. If a gunman gets into the school, you know, what do we do? Our kids do not need to be sitting ducks. Our teachers do not need to be defending themselves with the number two pencil. We've got to make sure that we have protection for our kids and our educators. And the goals, I mean, obviously the first goal, like I said, is to make the schools as safe as possible and to make sure that no one can get in. But I want you to think about what happened in Florida with the two coaches that were involved in that situation. You know, they rode up on a golf cart after they found out what had happened. And one of them was a ex-law enforcement. You know, and they went running into school. The other one was a coach. And both of these guys were in charge of school security. And here's what I think resonated with parents and why I think teachers, coaches reached out to me. All that coach could do was use his body as a shield. Yeah, one of these guys was ex-military that certainly was capable of carrying a weapon. And I think when you look at that, that's what got the conversation started. I also want to point out that at the school in Florida, they had an SRO officer. And if you look at school shootings across the U.S. and people that have studied it, the average shooting is three minutes. All right. If you look at the response time, especially in more rural areas, you're looking at a long time before anybody can get there. So the question is, what can we do in the state of Alabama to protect our kids if a gunman gets into our schools? Um, and like I said earlier, literally our, our students, our educators are sitting ducks and there's nothing they can do. They can run, they can hide. But right now there's not a way to defend themselves. And so our bill that we're gonna be introducing today in Montgomery, I'll be leaving here going to Montgomery, is gonna be a common sense solution. The first thing I wanna point out is that it's, it's voluntary. This isn't mandatory, but it's voluntary. So if an educator, an administrator wants to do this, it's certainly voluntary, and it will be voluntary. They're gonna have to go through a 40-hour A-Post training certification. A-Post is who trains our law enforcement in this state. They're great at what they do, and certainly everybody goes through A-Post uh, training is not gonna pass. And so these are gonna be certified people that are gonna be well-trained. Um, APOST is going to determine what that training is, and we've got full confidence in them. Second thing I think is important is there's going to be a mental health evaluation to this. We want to make sure that no one that is uh, carrying a gun in a school has a mental health issue, and so that's going to be an important part of this. There's going to be annual recertification by APOST, and that they're going to have to meet. Um, the cost, so you talk about the cost, you know, the cost of the pistol and the ammunition will be provided, I mean, it's going to be uh, even the teacher's going to pay for it, the administrator, but it's not going to be the school system. We're not giving out guns to people. That's not what we're talking about doing. Um, the cost of the training will be paid for by the state. So if someone is willing to you know, protect our kids and go through the training, that's going to be paid for by the state. And this is important too. The teachers, administrators that are carrying, it's going to be anonymous to the public. That, why is that important? We don't want the kids knowing, we don't want parents knowing, we don't, know a potential, we don't want a potential gunman knowing who's carrying. 
There's also going to be a marker that's going to identify these people with law enforcement. So law enforcement's going to know, and when APOS trains them, you know, there's going to be some type of marker this person will have if a situation breaks out where law enforcement knows who they are. Um, another thing that, you know, obviously we've heard about from the education community is the immunity side. And, you know, we've looked at, you know, one thing you look at, there's over uh, 14 states that have already done this. Uh, maybe five additional, so 19 total, and there's 10 that have pending legislation. And here's what's interesting. In 2003, my understanding is there was zero. And so you gotta ask, what's changed? I think our culture's changed. You know, that's from video games, that's from TV. But I mean, there is a big issue with violence now, and I wanna make sure my kids are protected. So I wanna bring up several speakers today to talk from uh, law enforcement community, from education community, and also members of the legislature to talk to you all. The first is going to be uh, Michael Edmondson. He's the uh, Chief Deputy of the Cab County uh, Sheriff. Do you want to come on up, Michael? Thank you, Mr. Ainsworth. In, in the Cab County, we are lucky enough to have SROs in all of our schools, but uh, we have we have SRO, we have teachers inside our school system in the Cab County that are certified law enforcement officers who cannot carry their weapon on school grounds. And I think if we had legislation passed like this that uh, so those people that are trained, uh, I think it would be a great help uh, for those folks that's trained to be able to carry their weapons on the school ground. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Uh, next, uh, Sheriff Scott Walls. Appreciate you coming. Thank you. Absolutely. Obviously, we're living in a different time. It's not what we grew up in when we all were in school. And SROs in schools is a great thing. And, and every system in Marshall County has SROs but there are not enough of them. Uh, two or three or four law enforcement officers response and the responsibility of taking care of a thousand children is just huge. We are proud that the legislature are looking at, at this bill along with other bills that will allow us to have more tools in law enforcement and law enforcement certainly supports anything that will help us protect our children in the state of Alabama. There have been numerous reports and threats made in surrounding counties in North Alabama and across the United States. It's time we changed the way we look at things and how we do things to protect our children. Representative Fandor, thank you. Absolutely, thank um, you. Senator Schofield, Kerry Reeves, thank you all very much for looking, looking at this issue. Thank you. Well, thank you. Uh, next, I want to bring up the uh, superintendent of the Marshall County Schools, uh, Cindy Wigley. As the superintendent of a Marshall County School System, my main concern is time. With, as Representative Ainsworth said, uh, with school shootings being under three minutes, uh, we just simply cannot wait on outside agencies for help. And we must be able to protect our children from the event. And as educators, we do anything in the world to protect our children. And so we appreciate your efforts. And Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, next, uh, got a teacher here at Gunnersville, uh, second grade, Sally Campbell. My name is Sally Campbell. I am a second grade teacher, and I support having properly trained faculty members to help keep our children safe. We also have with us the uh, superintendent of DeKalb County. I also represent DeKalb County. That's why we have members from there here, uh, Jason Barnett. Um, yeah, Thank you for a good yeah. opportunity to speak. Uh, you know, safety, student safety is the utmost importance. You have to have a safe and a, a safe school where kids feel safe and secure to get an education. And of course, uh, when I talked to Will about this legislature, obviously uh, we wanted to look at this and look at a holistic approach to school safety. There's much that can be done and I, I'm proud and thankful to have an opportunity to be at the table and, and talk about this bill and many other, the other bills you shared and some other opportunities that we can keep our schools safe. Uh, we had an incident last week uh, at Sylvania uh, that was on Tuesday and then followed by Wednesday shooting that really just kind of resonated, kind of pulled a heartstring with many of us in Cap County and we uh, are certainly looking aggressively at what we can do to support this and I appreciate uh, Mr. Ain Representative Ainsworth for starting this conversation and helping us along with that. Thank you very much. All right, next we got uh, Senator Clay Schofield. First, let me commend Representative Ainsworth for um, 
for bringing this bill and, and making it a making it a priority and, and uh, you know getting the legislature to make this a priority. The most important thing that we can do as government is uh, is to protect our citizens. And within that vein, what could be more important than protecting our children? And what we're doing right now is not enough. Uh, our delegation has made it a priority uh, to ensure that we uh, we provide better equipment. Uh, help fund SROs in our in our in our local systems, but it simply isn't enough. And so I, I just want to commend him for taking the next step and, and truly uh, helping to to protect the least of these, our children and our educators who do such important work for us. So we'll thank you. Yeah, thank you, Senator. And next, uh, I've got kept Representative Kerry Rich. Thank you, Will, and uh, of course I wholeheartedly uh, support your legislation. Uh, I had a similar bill to this uh, about five years ago, but the state wasn't ready at that time. Uh, there was reluctance for a number of reasons, but uh, things have changed since that time. And so now I think people understand the uh, importance of this legislation. And just one other thing that I wanted to mention. Uh, We've got to take a long range look at all of these issues. And one of the things that I think that we have to look at is our mental health system. Uh, what we do in this state, and I'm not being critical of the people that work in mental health, they do the best job they can do with the resources that they have. But what we do in mental health in this state and so many other states is pathetic. We have to address our mental health issues. The sheriff will tell you that 60% of his inmates in the county jail are there because of some mental health issue. We have 10 beds at Marshall Medical Center North that handles people uh, that have mental issues. They are always full and there is always a waiting list, always. So. Mental health is something that we have to address. And, you know, it's terrible, it's tragic that you have these instances come up. But it does allow us to focus our attention on the issues that we really need to focus on. This is a first step, but there are other steps that need to be taken as well. Thank you. And our uh, last speaker is uh, Majority Leader uh, Nathaniel Ledbetter, who I serve with in DeKalb County. Appreciate you coming. Absolutely. Certainly appreciate uh, Will bringing this piece of legislation. Two years ago, I dropped a resolution on behalf of school safety for a task force to study it. Some of the findings that we come back with is kind of shocking. One of the things I think Dr. Barnett had talked about, we got to secure our schools foremost. At the time, my son, which is an educator, I got two sons, both of them teach school, and of course we got grandchildren in the system. It scares me to death to know that our schools are left open as readily as they are. And my oldest son had asked me, why don't we, uh, why don't we train teachers to become SRO officers in essence? And that's what Wheels Bill basically does. It gives them a post training. So in their school, they can be designated uh, and have an opportunity if something unfortunate was to happen like this, at least they would be prepared and ready to do so. And with the training that Will was talking about, I certainly believe that we have people that's very capable in all our school systems that can handle that duty. So uh, for this piece of legislation, not only will my co-sponsor, but I'll help Will move it through the House and look forward to doing so. You know, it's time that we've become proactive in Alabama instead of having to be reactive. So with that, I, I certainly support this bill and support Will's effort. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. Well, this concludes our uh, press conference. I know a lot of the teachers. I want to thank you all for what we do. Our goal is to protect you all, protect the kids, and we're committed to doing that. I know you all got to get back to the classroom. Any of you all that can stick around for questions, you're certainly welcome to. I'll stick around, but I know the teachers and educators got to get back. So thank you. There's really several things we're wanting to accomplish in Alabama. First, um, you know, we've got to make sure we have an SRO officer in every school in the state. That's important. Second, we've got to make sure the schools have the funding to actually keep their schools secure. That's through, you know, making sure they have cameras, making sure they have the locks on the doors, but we've got to make sure funding's there to do that. And then the third thing we're talking about is actually our bill, and our bill deals with making sure that 
if uh, if someone gets into our schools that our teachers are um, you know, have training. It's going to be a 40-hour A-post training, uh, same training that our police officers go through. All right. On top of that, there's going to be a mental health component. Um, you know, there's also going to be a recertification annually, and we're going to make sure that you know somebody goes through this, that they're properly trained and can defend our kids if somebody gets in the school. That's what we're trying to do. And you said you said you had three kids, is that right? What, what grade do they in? Yeah, so I've got twin boys, uh, Hunter and Hayes, that are in second grade, and I have a daughter, Addie, that's in kindergarten, and they're they're in school right here in Gunnersville. And so, you know, I've got uh, a huge, I mean, you know, uh, investment just with kids in the school. My wife has been in education, and you know, like I said, the reason we brought this bill was educator educators reaching out to us, asking us to do something. And it really hit home when uh, you heard about Florida. It did. I mean, I think just, uh, you know, it was honestly, I think as a lot of people, it's scary where our society's gone. And uh, I think that's for a lot of reasons. I think it's just the overall violence that's going on, but it's uh, certainly a scary situation for what's going on. And um, we've got to make sure, obviously, number one goal is secure our schools. But number two, we got to look at if someone gets in, how do we, you know, take out the gunman? And that's really what this bill's about because the gunman's there to do harm. And we got to make sure that he can't do that. Do you think that'll think realistically this will work? You know, I think when you look at the other states that have done it, I mean, you've got California, Tennessee, Michigan, Texas, all the other states that have done it since 2003, I think certainly, you know, when you look at there, they haven't had any incident that I'm aware of where anybody's been armed in the school. And so I think it's certainly a common sense solution to a bad problem that unfortunately we're having to face. I mean, it shouldn't be like this. I mean, sh kids should go to school and, you know, shouldn't have to worry about anything like this, but times have changed. Are there any concerns that students may find the concealed weapons that teachers keep in the classrooms and could possibly harm each other? Sure, yeah, there's always that concern, and part of uh, APOS training is going to be, you know, there's going to be different holsters that, you know, they might potentially have to have. Um, you know, they're going to train them on how to keep the weapon. I mean, there's all kind of biometric cases that can only open with fingerprints or, you know, through your eyes. So I think, you know, certainly a concern, but I think that's what the training's for, to make sure they're properly trained. Okay. And it's going to be introduced today, legislation? It is, yeah. We plan on dropping the legislation this afternoon. I think we'll have a lot of co-sponsors. I mean, there is a tremendous amount of support from law enforcement community, from educators, and just from parents across the state. I mean, like I said, we've literally had thousands of people reach out to us from all across the state that are in support of this. Pretty long process, kind of, what, it gets dropped today, what, what's the next steps? Yeah, I mean, so right now, I mean, what we're doing is today we're going to drop it, get co-sponsors, get momentum, it'll be in committee more than likely next week, you know, first get it passed out of committee. I'm sure there'll be a public hearing, which will delay it a week from when it gets voted on, and after that, take it to the floor, and, uh, you know, we want to get an up or down vote and, you know, just debate the issue, and obviously, here's what we want to do. I want to make sure everybody knows we want everybody to the table. We want law enforcement. We want the schools, we want superintendents, we want Board of Education, we want parents. We want to bring everybody to the table and make sure our kids are safe. That's what this is about.